Hello and welcome to a CPD talk. This talk is about batch testing in transfusion and why it is important. So why do we batch test? In accordance with good manufacturing practice, all reagents and cards are batch tested on arrival to make sure they obtain the correct reproducible results. It is critical in all blood transfusion processes that we ensure that reagents received from the manufacturers perform as expected when tested in the lab using laboratory equipment. Reagents must not be used on patient samples until tested and found acceptable, as otherwise this may lead to inaccurate patient results. Some conditions that may be relevant to batch testing. The way reagents are stored in the factory, the way they are transported and the ambient conditions, for example, the temperature in the lab, can vary from factory conditions and can affect the performance of the reagents. So again, this is why it is so important all reagents and cards are batch tested on arrival. Quality control. Batch testing is run on all reagents received before they are used, so any issues with the reagents can be highlighted. Batch testing uses QC material, either the Biorad QC for manual tube grouping, the Griffoles Duo QC, which is used for the majority of the testing, or the Albershaw QC. This QC material is used as it has a predefined result and therefore it can accurately show whether the materials being batch tested are giving the correct results. Labelling of the products. Cards and reagents which are awaiting batch testing should have a blue dot sticker attached so people know not to use them yet. Once batch testing has been approved, a yellow dot sticker is attached to show it is ready for use. A red dot sticker is attached if a reagent fails. Products with a red dot must be quarantined immediately. There are blue, yellow and red boxes in the cold room which correspond with the dot stickers where reagents should be placed. Blue for awaiting batch testing, yellow, batch tested and red, quarantined. Preparation for batch testing. Firstly, print out the appropriate acceptance testing form. These are found on cupoles for each individual reagent. Fill in details at the top of the form with the batch number, the expiry date of the reagent or card and the date that the product was received. Perform a visual check of two random cards or reagents that are to be batch tested. You are looking for droplets, air bubbles or if the gel is dry. If the visual check passes, you can then proceed. Check the product insert against the product insert in the appropriate batch testing reagent file. There are two files located in the lab, one for Griffoles and Biorad batch testing and one for NHSBT and Antisera batch testing. To check the revision date is the same or on NBS reagent the product number is the same. If the insert differs from the one in the file, do not proceed and quarantine the product until a senior has investigated the product for any change in storage or use. If the insert is the same, batch testing can commence as detailed on the relevant acceptance form, either manually or automated on the analyzer. If the insert has been updated, once a senior has checked for any change in storage or use, we will update cupoles with the new batch insert. When batch testing, we only change the reagent that we are batch testing because we have previously shown that the other reagents being used give the expected results. Therefore, any errors that occur can only be due to the reagent being batch tested. Acceptance testing form. Here is an example of an acceptance testing form. As previously mentioned, you would fill out the top section with the relevant information before starting batch testing. There is an explanation of the process, i.e. manual or automated testing, and the appropriate reagents, cards or QCs to use. As you can see, the section at the bottom of the form is completed with the results, signed by the member of staff who performed the batch testing, 
and checked and authorised by a BMS or senior who has been signed off as competent in batch testing. Panel sheets. The three cell screen, panel one and panel two, and the little r panel reagents have the new panel sheets, antigrams delivered with the reagents. Photocopy eight to 10 copies of the panel sheet, leaving one out to check the new results of the new cells against. File the copies in the panel folder in the appropriate section and file the master sheet at the back of the folder. Here is an example of one of our panel sheets. Batch testing results. If the expected results are obtained, sign the batch testing performed by section on the acceptance form and pass to a senior or BMS who has been signed off as competent in batch testing procedures. Once the BMS has signed it off as accepted, place the form in the relevant batch testing folder. There are two folders, one for Griffoles, Biorad cards and reagents, and one for all other reagents. Label the reagent with a yellow dot to show it has been batch tested and ready for use. Attach a reagent in use form to the product. If the product has to be refrigerated, place it in the yellow bin in the cold room. Whoever puts the reagent into use should sign and date the reagent in use slip and place in the band 3 MLA tray for it to be updated in the batch testing folder accordingly. And here we have an example of a reagent in use slip. The name of the reagent and the lot number is filled in once the product has been batch tested and attached to the product. Whoever puts the reagent into use, signs and dates the form for it to be updated in the relevant batch testing folder. If the expected results are not obtained and or the reaction strengths are less than one plus, repeat testing three times, filling out the relevant QC failure documentation form and return to senior blood transfusion BMSs. Reagents which fail batch testing must be quarantined immediately by labelling with a red dot and placed in the red box in the cold room or computer room, dependent on whether it has to be refrigerated or not. Depending on whether there is a problem with the reagent, senior staff may need to alert the suppliers and obtain another batch of reagents. Batch testing failures should be documented by raising an incident on QPulse. Thank you for listening to this today.